Good Friday afternoon, Golden Black Live. Uh, man, Stuart, it is cold out there. And you got a short sleeve on there. Yeah, you're ready to play. We're going to talk about a lot of things about playing in Minnesota. Stuart's had some great memories of doing that. Uh, uh, and at least that 2001 game was an amazing one. But I want to thank our sponsors. If you're watching Golden Black Live, you can also send us in questions for us. Stuart will be on the first two segments. In addition to Tyler Trent will be at segment two. And Brian Newbert will join me segment three. He's, out, he's down at basketball right now talking with Matt Painter and getting the lowdown before Purdue's game against Ball State. Hilton Garden Inn, our sponsor, along with State Farm agent Trent Johnson. We want to thank them. And John Basham and the folks at Basham Reynolds and Routes, or Route 66, True, and Triple X. Did you ever eat a Triple X when you are in college? I, I have. Yes, yeah, I have. I'm gonna guess my you wife have, you, she loves like Triple X, and so does my daughters. And But I'm talking about when you were in college. Were you there after hours now and then? I think there was a couple late night. A couple late <laughs> night Now they don't do the late night thing anymore, <laughs> but it's a tradition like no other people like, uh, like to, to do. My favorite was the Bernie Flowers Burger. Yeah. That's one of my favorites. There's still there. time to have a Stuart Schweiger burger or whatever. <laughs> if it was, what would it be for you? It'd be a turkey burger, which people probably won't want. Oh, so you're a healthy guy. I'm a healthy guy. That's good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I don't think the turkey burger would probably be Oh, too I don't know. We could talk. Carrie and Greg, they, they <laughs> are they're into getting it done over there, and I, I wouldn't be surprised that they might, might, might consider that. All right. Uh, you know, the Boilermakers have a, a, uh, a test tomorrow. Haven't, it's not often it produces a two touch, near two touchdown favorite on the road. You can relate to that though, and even as a player, and all your days in the NFL, et cetera. But uh, mindset needs to be what for Purdue? Do you think tomorrow? Start fast. Yeah. You know, we need to go out there and start fast. And and one thing that I like about our offense is we're a big play offense. Yeah. Brom loves the big play. We've had four plays over 80 yards, seven over 70 yeah. yards, 13 over 60. And one thing Minnesota does is they give up. Yeah the big play. So we've got to go out there, establish our dominance early, and let those Minnesota Gophers know that we're here, we're going to put up a lot of points. And even though you got a new defensive coordinator, we are still going to put up points like we were before. You know, you had a situation a little similar as, as in your freshman year, as a true freshman starter on the Rose Bowl team. Minnesota has a lot of youth. 51% of its line, uh, roster, I believe, are freshmen. Yes. Hard to imagine. But you guys had a defense with that mentality. There were a lot of redshirt freshmen, but, you know, you're talking about Craig Terrell and Landon Johnson and yourself, guys who are young. What's the, what what's, goes through the mind? Do young players care anymore that they're freshmen? Does that matter as much or, what, or how does it matter? Well, here's the difference that we had is, one, we had a great defensive coordinator in Brock's back. Yeah. You know, you're talking Joe Rossi's coming in who was a defensive line coach. If he's going to have a different aspect to the coaching style than uh, Rob Smith did. But we also had great leadership in Aiken Adel, Chris Clopton, Ashante Woodyard, um, you know, Joe Odom and those guys. So you have to have a mixture of young, talented freshmen, but with senior leadership. Yeah. And I'm going to include Matt Light, Drew Brees, and yeah. Sutherland as those guys as well. Minnesota doesn't really have that. You yeah. know, one of their key uh, leaders of that team – uh, was Winfield Jr. and he suffered an injury and when they, yeah. when he kind of went yeah. down, their, huge problem. Huge them. problem. Their defense kind of really fell to the wayside. And you see here again, I talk about the big plays. They've given up 42, 48, 30, 53, and 55 points in their five conference <laughs> losses. Yeah. So again, I mean, when you look at the matchup defensively, they have a lot of young guys. I feel that that's out of necessity, yeah. not because those young guys are beating out seniors. Yeah. Yeah, and that's an, also a P.J. Fleck, kind of a little bit of philosophies. We're going to start, we're, we're, going, to, we're going to recruit like, like heck, so to speak, and get as many young guys in there. Where Jeff Brom has come in and, and said, hey, we're going to play the, best, play the best guys and we're going to win now. I mean, from a freshman perspective, you want, you want to play, but from a, guys that are older, older than that team, you want to win. I mean, well, look, talk about Jeff Brom's approach and what you think about that. Well, obviously, I, I love it. Yeah. You know, I, I think in, in today's society uh, and in college football, people want things instantly, right? Yeah. The fans don't have a lot of patience. That's why I'm confused on P.J. Flex, you know, hey, let's wait, let's wait, let's wait. But when you're a senior or you're a junior that's been on that team, and when P.J. Fleck took this <laughs> team over, you know, I, they had a great record. They were on four yeah. straight bowl games, and uh, they had some issues off the field that, that ended up getting him in the position there. So they had players on that yeah. team. And as a se junior or senior coming in and a guy talking about, I'm going to replace you with these incoming freshmen, and this is my thing, 
where does that, how does that make a player feel? Yeah. You know, I don't know if they really are putting forth the effort they should be uh, because really your head coach doesn't have confidence yeah. in you. They're going for that youth movement. And again, I don't think it's because you're, they are getting some good recruits, but again, I don't think it's as if it was for our freshmen where we came in and we came in yeah. and we beat some of the older guys out because we were athletically a little bit better. These guys are playing because one, they've had a lot of injuries and two, it's, it's PJ flex getting those young guys experience. And really there might be some guys on the bench that maybe should be playing in yeah. front of those freshmen. You know, that's a, that's an interesting dynamic. And, and, uh, uh, also in this era of patience and trying to be patient, um, they're not always, they're not as patient as I thought they, I, at least what you the rumblings up from Minneapolis, hard to know cause we're not there, yep. but, uh, uh, they don't seem the the bloom seems to be a little bit off the rose with PJ Flex. Yeah, and I don't know if that's fair because but, 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 but we'll see. <laughs> well, apparently, you know, he it worked in at Western. Oh, His system worked, but again, that's the MAC, and you can probably implement younger players in the MAC uh, because the competition level probably isn't as great. When you talk about the Big Ten and a Power Five conference, it's tough for those young guys to come in and one physically match up and two, be able to grasp the concepts of the schemes of the offense and defense. And I think you're seeing some struggles with that. Yeah. I mean, at any point in time, you could see seven or eight freshmen on the field for Minnesota, yeah. and they have not had a lot of success with that. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be an interesting storyline. All right, now, one of the factors that always gets where I'm a big weather guy, and I'm always interested <laughs> in what, what weather does. What First, what's, what's the coldest game you remember? Not near, Purdue or NFL or high school, what, what's the coldest game you ever played? Well, you know what? I've, I've played in Lambeau twice in yeah. December, once with Oakland, once with Detroit. But my coldest game would go back to 2002, and I'm sure you remember yeah. this game, up in East Lansing. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. We went up there, and it was a, it was a back-and-forth game. Yeah. Um, and that was really the game where, where – uh, Brand, uh, sorry, Brandon. Kyle Orton. Kyle, well, Kyle Orton kind of revitalized his right. career then because when uh, Brandon Kirsch went down in the fourth quarter, Orton comes in and throws a pass to Stanford. But I want to say that that game was like negative 17 yeah. degrees yeah. with the wind chill. Yeah. And I'm, as you can see, I got short sleeves yeah. on right now. I'm, yeah. I'm coming from Michigan. This is great football weather for <laughs> me. I thrive in this type of weather. I, I'd much rather play in Lambeau in December than down in Miami in yeah. August. You know, so I'm, I'm a cold weather really? guy. Um, because you can get warm, you know. And so I, I coming from Michigan again. By the time playoffs start, you're you're in games like this. So I really enjoy it. Now, previous, you know, when we we had Hope and those guys yeah. and Hazel recruiting a lot of those well, Florida, Florida guys. guys yeah. I don't know how those guys really like doing yeah. that, you know. Yeah. But again, when we played in Minnesota, now that was the Metrodome. Yeah. So we were indoors, which I haven't been to. T, is it TCF? TCF Bank Stadium. T, right. TCF Bank Stadium, which looks like a beautiful stadium. It is. Another factor, though, is we're we're zero and four yeah, in our there. trips up there. Yeah, Not so won. have I, led though. They've we had have chances. led. We have they've led. Had we won. haven't had success up there. But again, I wouldn't be too worried. Is this being a trap game? Because we we kind of had that little bit of a lull against Michigan State. Yeah. Um, although Michigan State is a is a much better team than Minnesota. Yeah. I have a lot of respect for D'Antonio, um, and their defense is solid. Yeah. Uh, and when you have a solid defense and a struggling offense, I think your chances of winning go up. But when you have a defense giving up that many points, it's going to take a heck of an offensive kind of blowout for you to even be in the game. And I just don't see our defense allowing this offense to score as many points as our offense is going to score on their defense. All right, I want to ask you also, is since we had you on here, we know Jacob Thieneman was very good last year. Yeah. He's been great this year. He has. Brennan Thieneman's come in and done a good job. But talk about that secondary Giving up a lot of yards, but that is not necessarily indicative of, I mean, they're last in the league, giving up 300 yards a game. Lack of a pass rush at times has yep. really hurt. Give me your assessment of, the, of that, of the Boilermaker defense as a whole, but also maybe it's pass defense. Well, I really like Von Mosley as well. Yeah. He's a guy that's, that's you know, been a, been a starter for us last season, yeah. played a little bit as a freshman. Um, needs to get a little bit bigger. Yeah. You know, he's a smaller guy, but he's an athletic guy. Actually, you know, Thieneman, our best really pass rusher. I think he leads our team right now yeah. in sacks with four, if, yeah. I, if, I'm, not, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so he's a guy. The only thing is, though, when you need to create pressure with your safeties, now you're, you're leaving those guys, who you know, black men and those guys who are out there on the edges kind of on an island. Mm -hmm. uh, but, again, I go back to Ohio State, and our, our secondary played phenomenal. Yeah. I mean, we had a lot of pass breakups, and we were playing guys a lot tighter. Now against Michigan State, for whatever reason, we yeah. played a little bit passive. We made the adjustments against Iowa, and I see us matching up really well against Minnesota. And really, Minnesota, Rashad Bateman is a freshman. He was named freshman of yeah. the week this past year. Had had 175 yards and two touchdowns against 
a depleted Illinois yeah. defense. So, you know, I, I, I don't know how well I, I want to put faith into him. But I see our defensive backs matching up really well. Now, here's the key point to this game, um, Alan, is Minnesota has, has turned the ball over 17 times yeah. in six Big Ten games. So we need to take advantage of that. We need to keep that going. Pass breakups when the ball's in the air, those are good. We need interceptions, and if we can create one of those interceptions into a touchdown, our chances of winning go way up. So we've got to think interception, turnovers, and I think we're going to see that this Saturday. Spoken from the man that is the all-time <laughs> interceptions leader at Purdue, but Nick Holt did talk about that this week. Uh, we had a story on the site about the fact of, of that mentality of creating turnovers, and he yes. think feeling that that would go out. And what I thought was interesting is do – defenses over time is it almost are they lay in waiting and then that works its way to the point where you can you can make uh become a, a defense that starts doing t- making takeaways or how do you view that well you know it's a mindset and yeah. i remember i go back to 2001 we preached turnovers yeah. from august until we played in the sun bowl against washington state where i think we turned the ball over on them like five or six times and I want to say that year we were second in the nation for turnovers, I think maybe tied with Miami yeah. with like 31 or something turnovers, whether that's interceptions mm-hmm. or fumbles. So if you have that as a mindset that, that when that ball's in the air, it's going to be mine, you play the receiver, or if that ball carrier is running and you have someone wrapping him up and you go in there and you're hitting that yeah. ball out or, you know, instead of just getting the sack, coming over and getting the sack fumble, it is a mindset. Um, they do tend to multiply. It's kind of like yeah. the more you think about it, yeah. the more they come. Um, so, again, but you've got to be able to take calculated risks, yeah. right? You can't just jump routes. You've got to think, you know, when they're in this part of the field and it's this formation and I see this guy running an out route, they're probably going to run that post. You can jump stuff like yeah. that. But you've got to be able to watch film and you've got to have that football IQ going a little bit. And once that thing starts rolling, they just seem to start coming. Yeah, that's what's going to be so hopefully. It's not to cut yeah, you off. Yeah. Hopefully that comes tomorrow. Well, and it's an interesting storyline because it doesn't seem like anybody, at least in Purdue games, Purdue's not really fumbling the football. They haven't fumbled it many times. Nobody's fumbling the football anymore. That's not completely true, I'm sure. I don't know really if they have data. But is that, do you see, is that different than it was? Or is that, is that well, just – I don't have any data to support my premise, but has something changed? You bring up a great point. Yeah. And here's what changed is it's, it's these rules of hitting a defenseless player. Yeah. Because in my day, when we were playing, a guy's wrapped up and he's still trying to fight for yards. Yeah. They're considering that almost a defensive, defenseless, defenseless player. player. Yeah, good point. In the day, when that guy's still trying to fight and get yards, you're going up and you are hitting him as hard and as hard as you can. So even when he's falling down and guys are wrapping him up, and that's where I kind of made my, my mark was coming up and laying the wood on those guys, and yeah. they're not expecting you to come. And if that referee hasn't blown that whistle yet, that guy is live. And I think now they're blowing the whistle a little bit faster. And I think defensive players are just, are just worried about flying in there and, and trying to take, not take somebody's head off, but you know what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah. That kind of gets so back. I think that goes into it. Yeah, and I think that's been a factor. Okay, a couple a big, big development this morning, 7.30 a.m., how the world has changed. That Instagram tells us that uh, we, we kind of knew this was coming, but Milton Wright, uh, yes. four-star receiver, uh, makes a commitment to, to Purdue from Louisville. You had an interesting evaluation, and, and Stewart's day job is a 101.7 The Hammer, which you can listen to on the Internet if you're not in the Lafayette area, uh, on Next Radio, and et cetera. Tune in as well, probably. And, and my point is that you had, a, you had a good little video this morning about uh, breaking him down. Tell me what you see, and you have an interesting... Uh, I know Brian had talked a little bit about his ability maybe to play in the secondary or see where he'll end up as a player, but he is a physical talent, physical specimen. Well, what I, what I really liked, you know, he's 6'3", 200 pounds, so yeah. he's a big guy right away, and that's kind of the similar size that I was when I came out. And really, when you watch his film, a lot of quarterback stuff in there. Yeah. He's, he's more, they call him a receiver, but he's really more of an athlete. Yeah. Uh, 10, 900-meter guy, he's a long strider, but he's a big physical guy. Um, and on defense, you know, he had an interception, then he ran back for a 105-yard touchdown on his highlight yeah. film. I saw one play where over the middle he came and he separated the ball from the receiver with yeah. a very physical hit. Um, you know, so he sounds like a guy who wants to get on the field fast. Yeah. And when I came into Purdue, I didn't know if I was going to be a receiver yeah. or a defensive back or whatever I was going to be. Yeah. Um, and really, if And you were a high school quarterback. I was a high school option quarterback, yeah. yeah. Um, the other thing, too, is he's a phenomenal kickoff return yeah. man. He, uh, he had six or seven on his highlight film, two of them being for touchdowns, one of 85 yards, one of 79 yards. So he is a playmaker. Um, 
you know, and, and really right now we've got some great receivers. I mean, yeah. you, you talk about Marshawn Rice, TJ Sheffield, and possibly, hopefully, you know, with David, David Bell, Bell in the mix. We'll find out. Um, there is some big-time talent there. So, I don't know. I mean, me being a defensive guy, I'd love to see him back there roaming, <laughs> you, the, yeah. roaming the secondary. Um, hopefully he doesn't, uh, you know, cringe at that. Yeah. But when I read his stuff and why he chose Purdue, it sounds like he's a guy who wants to get on the field. So, I think wherever we can use him would be phenomenal. Whether it's offense, whether it's defense, I think he's going to be a guy that we're going to hear his name quite a bit in the next four or five years. You know, you're interesting because your time at Purdue was really the of the last quarter century, the, the, the peak in recruiting because you were surrounded by some talent. You know, there's the Ray Edwards of the world oh, yeah. came in and some guys, Bernard Powell, some big, Bernard Powell, yeah. big name guys. Uh, Jeff Brom's getting to that level, certainly. And, and what is that mentality, you think? You know, Joe, Joe Tiller and Jeff Brom were different guys. Their staffs were different, though there are some similarities, mm-hmm. too. What's the secret sauce, you think? Well, you know, I think it's his enthusiasm. And everyone that I've read that has committed to us has, has talked about how honest they feel our coaching yeah. staff is. Yeah. You know, this is what we want you to do. This is what we see you doing. This is what we do, and you see it on Saturdays. Yeah. And you see those guys bought into Brahms' system. You see the guys getting coached. You see the guys developing. And you see the atmosphere around yeah. here that Brahms yeah. has created. Yeah. I mean, when you walk into, you know, two sellouts in the, in the last two games, which is, I think, it's the first time since 2008 yeah. or something like that, when you see that environment and you see the passion that he has and that he's committed to this program and he can – he can turn you into a successful football player. But I think number one is just his honesty when he walks in. That's what I really liked about Joe, Brock Spack, and Jim Chaney when they recruited me was, hey, Stu, here's a game plan that we see for you. They had four plays on offense that they showed me, four plays on defense that they showed me, and four plays on special teams. This is what we see you doing here. Yeah. And I think each recruit sees a game plan specifically made for them, and, and, and that's really attractive to a young player like that. So. And we were just talking about this over um, at Newhoff Media with, with some of the guys that this might be, once this recruiting class is all said and done, one of the top recruiting classes, even battling some of the recruiting classes during my time here yeah. with the talent that we're getting. I mean, it's absolutely amazing. Yeah, we're going to be ranked uh, still in the top 25 on rivals, and, uh, and that uh, has not happened in a long, 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 long time. Long so, time. <laughs> so that's a good thing. All right, now people need to know, we, everybody, we talked a little bit about what you're doing in your – Data, but you had a big, a big deal. I've, the Sagma County, you're not old enough to be in the Hall of Fame. But <laughs> like you get, you get. This is this week. This was this past Sunday. Sagamore, uh, Ca- Saginaw County Saginaw Sports County. Hall yep. of Fame yep. for Saginaw, Saginaw, Michigan is Stewart's home. Um, we, me and my wife and my three kids went up to Saginaw on Saturday and uh, got into the Saginaw County Sports Hall of Fame. Here's here's the that, plaque that we got. Yeah, that, I like the that's picture. That's me. Now this picture I use it quite a bit because this is about three broken noses before <laughs> yeah so this is probably one of my best yeah. so that's why i look a little bit younger in there but it was a great honor probably one of the top classes that we've had uh tory jackson who was a four-year captain and starter for notre dame basketball yeah. um also the second high football team which it was kind of fitting they knocked me out of the playoffs yeah. my senior year but on that team alone alan listen to this because you played at bay a no, Saginaw no, Heritage High School Heritage. okay i'm sorry go ahead off that team that that had uh they had 24 college football players off that team they had 10 division one yeah they had uh six nfl football players off that team three super bowl champions and an nba player yeah and i told them and it took all that for them to beat me in the playoffs so it was <laughs> kind of a go. joke but a great honor another guy uh terrence roberson who was a phenomenal basketball player was a mcdonald all-american uh, i think he was a parade all-american three years in a row which only two other basketball players yeah. have done that uh, a great coach, and forgive me, I can't remember yeah. her name now, but coached at Michigan, yeah. now she's at Central Michigan. So it was a great honor to go back and be honored by that. And I think it's five years after your playing careers when you're up for the first ballot. And I was voted in, and, and it's a great honor for me. And, and hopefully I'll continue to um, can live up to that. Maybe, well, maybe, maybe continue to go to another yeah. <laughs> Hall of Fame in this area as we get going here. Yeah, I don't know who he's <laughs> talking about, yeah, but uh, my guess is you're going to get a good shot at that uh, before long. Um, la- you know, la- lastly, also, you talk about the, your day job. Obviously, uh, how you like the radio gig. You're doing doing afternoons with uh, Clayton Duffy, yeah. but uh, uh, you're you're very good at uh, communicating your, your message, but uh, how, how have you liked doing that on a daily basis? It, it, it has been absolutely uh, amazing to be back in this area and, 
and being able to be around Purdue football and Purdue sports. And I love high school sports. Yeah. In this area right now, we've got some great, yeah. great high school teams, you know, one being Harrison and Westside playing in the, in the playoffs tonight. Which oh, it's going to be so cool. It's going to be some good <laughs> games, you know. Um, yeah. Uh, but being, like, you know, there's just so much success with the baseball program in the spring and the softball program and the track and field and the way recruiting has been going and with the basketball season coming up, not only men, but women basketball. Yeah. I mean, and the, the, the great success that Dave Shondell and the volleyball yeah. team is having right now. It's just, I mean, I'm, I can walk to the stadium yeah. in, in literally 10 minutes. Um, and, again, to be around here in this environment – and, and have my job be talk Purdue, yeah. Purdue sports. Yeah, I mean, what, what better could I yeah. have, you know, and, and have my kids be around it. And it's, it's just been a, a true blessing and honor to be back here and be a part of all this. Yeah, and you have a chance. Uh, uh, it's fun when you have a chance to have your kids be yes. part and go to games and see maybe – at least get a feel for what, what dad did back in the day. I mean, <laughs> yeah. well, I mean, they, they gives them perspective of what it's, they do, you know, yeah. and they're getting to the age now where I, I will put on some of the, cause I have been converting yeah, I the, bet v, you do. the VHS tape. <laughs> oh now, yeah. We yeah. have the VHS. I've been converting that to DVD and I'll put the, I'll put it up there. And when my daughter for sports football day, we have nine jerseys. She'll yeah. walk in the, <laughs> the teachers will know, you know, whatever. But um, again, this community has just been awesome. It was great when, when, when we were here, uh, me and my wife, my wife ran track yeah, here. Yeah, Chrissy, right? Um, you know, so when we were here, I fell in love with it. And it, when I had the opportunity to move back and get into the sports and get yeah. into the media side of it, um, I jumped on it because I want my family to grow up in this environment. And, I mean, what better people to be around yeah. than the, 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 the typical new county and, and the Purdue family, and it's just been, it's been awesome. Yeah, all right, we're going get, to get, get on to another segment of awesomeness when uh, Tyler Trent will, he's going to break down, uh, help us break down the Purdue-Minnesota game, and we'll talk about uh, what's been going on in the busy life of Tyler Trent here in the next segment. We're going to take a two-minute break and uh, catch our breath a little bit, and we'll be back on Golden Black Live with Tyler Trent and Stuart Schweigert. It's agreed to stay on another segment, so that's, that's all good. We'll look forward to that. Brian Newbert will, will join us in segment three. So. Uh, we'll be back in a couple minutes on Golden Black Live.